Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Daisy. For today's video, I will be reading my subscribers' spooky stories, and specifically spooky stories that they have encountered in Mexico. So grab your snacks, grab your cobija, and let's get straight into it. Hi, Daisy. My parents are from Guanajuato, Mexico. My dad, tia, grandma, and sister all have a gift. They can see and hear the non-living. One day, when my dad was in his early 20s, he was in Mexico with my mom and my older sister, who was around three years old at the time. They were staying at my dad's mom's house, and that night, he was planning on going to a baile with his cousins and friends. Well, as he was ironing his shirt on the bed, my grandma was sitting on the couch watching TV her head facing the TV, so my dad only saw the back of her head. He was asking my grandma if she could watch my sister while he was out. My grandma's responses were quiet and unclear. My dad was focusing on his shirt, so he didn't think anything of it. The doorbell rang, and my dad told my grandma he would go get it. The house was a two-story house, but the second floor had a balcony from the inside. My dad went downstairs to open the door, but to his surprise, it was my grandma with groceries in her hand. My dad looked at my grandma and turned white. My grandma said, Te asustaron, no? My grandma asked my dad to get her her keys from upstairs, but he was too scared to go back up because he had no idea who he had been talking to. Where my grandma lived was a jardín and the top of the buildings were houses, while the bottom was where people worked. Before those homes were built, it used to be a cemetery. The jardín was beautiful, but the minute you went inside the homes, you could feel all the negative energy. That whole night while my dad was out, he couldn't stop thinking about when he had to go home. When he got home, there were about three flights of stairs that turned at each corner. It was night, and the light switch for the stairs was only at the bottom. This meant my dad had to climb up the dark stairs without being able to turn on the light. He ran up the stairs in the dark, holding the rail, and went straight to sleep. To this day, we don't know what or who that was. Hi Daisy, my name is Rodrigo and I want to share a true and scary story about my mom when she was younger. This story is about an eerie, chilling experience my mom had as a child. When she was around 8 years old, she lived in Puebla, Mexico with her 6 siblings in a small 2 bedroom house near a cemetery. Many people in the neighborhood claimed to hear a horse galloping at midnight. Yet, there was never a horse in sight. My mom, a skeptic, dismissed these stories. One night, around 1 a.m., my mom woke up to the unsettling sound of a horse galloping back and forth right outside her window. Bewildered, she wondered why anyone would be riding a horse so late at night. So uneasy but exhausted, she eventually drifted back to sleep. The following night, the same haunting sound woke her at exactly 1 a.m. She woke her brother, my Theo, who was sleeping next to her, and asked if he could hear the horse. He told her he couldn't hear anything and said, Tu mente te está jugando contigo. Then told her to go back to sleep. But the noise persisted and for a whole week, it woke her up at the same time every night. On the sixth night, driven by a mix of fear and curiosity, she decided to investigate. The window in her room was large and heavy, requiring both hands to open. With her heart pounding, she crept out of bed, approached the window, and waited for the horses galloping to draw near. When the sound was right outside, she flung the window wide open and peered into the night. She saw nothing but darkness. 
with the weak streetlight barely casting a glow on the deserted street. As she strained her eyes, the eerie sound of the horse continued, but there was no horse in sight. The noise seemed to pass right by her, yet there was nothing there. Terrified, she slammed the window shut, locked it, and scrambled back to her bed, pulling the covers over her head. The next morning, she awoke in front of the bedroom door, her body cold and stiff. She recounted the night's events to her mother, my grandma. Her grandma's face turned pale with fear and anger. She told my mom, El diablo trató de llevarte and sternly warned her never to open the window at night again. From that day on, my mom obeyed my abuela's warning. She never opened the window at night. And eventually, she stopped waking up at 1 a.m. hearing that noise. To this day, my mom still remembers this story vividly and often shares it with my friends and little cousins, sending shivers down their spines. Hi, my name is Gerardo. I have a story that my dad once shared with me. This story takes place in Durango, Mexico. When my dad was younger, he used to work with a man on a hacienda, in which he worked there for 10 years. One day, the man in charge started firing the employees because the hacienda was facing a bad harvest. The fruit trees and animals were dying, and the man didn't have enough money. Two weeks passed, and my dad was the only one left working on the hacienda. He wanted to leave, but the man told him to stay. My dad kept rejecting him, but eventually agreed to stay for just two more days. My dad saw the man depressed and sad because everything was dying. One night, my dad was outside taking a breath of fresh air when he saw the man walking straight into the forest. My dad got suspicious and followed his boss, spying on him. The man went towards a tall figure standing in the middle of the woods. The figure looked like a tall man, almost like slender men. He was very tall, wearing a black suit and a sombrero. My dad could only see his red eyes. Then the figure took a large book that my dad said was a demonic Bible, like the devil's Bible. My dad couldn't hear what they were saying. The next morning, my dad woke up to the sound of cows and horses mowing. He said, Que raro, ¿por qué hay animales aquí? They were all dead. My dad opened the door and saw a paradise. The fruit trees were back and he saw beautiful horses and cows he had never seen before in his life. My dad remembered the previous night when he saw his boss meeting the tall figure. The tall figure was the devil. He made a pact with the devil, which is why all these things had happened. Over the next three days, the employees started to come back and everything started to return to normal. In the following days, the man got four new trucks. They were very nice trucks, and my dad said the man had a lot of money. One night, my dad saw the man walking into the woods again, so he followed him. This time, the man met a big bull. The bull looked so ugly that my dad had never seen anything like it before. The bull was big, tall, huge, and had glowing red eyes. It opened its mouth and stuck out its long tongue, grabbing the man and putting him in its mouth. The bull swallowed the man and then spit him out. The man's body was covered in black saliva and blood. Two years passed and everything was going well. But then, the man contracted a strange disease and passed away within two days. When he died, everything on the hacienda started to die again, including the beautiful horses and cows. The employees left the hacienda, including my dad. Twelve years passed, and now back to the present. About two years ago, I visited Durango. This happened during the summer. I went to the hacienda 
and everything was in ruins. The things I saw were huge, deep holes because many people believed the man had buried money there. And some say they see a tall man or a big bull with glowing red eyes. Many people say that the place is cursed. Hi Daisy, my name is Yaya. When I was 17 years old, I went to visit my family in Mexico, Guanacatlan, Jalisco. I had never been there before, so everything was new to me. Before I left, my older siblings told me to watch out and be careful because I might see or hear things. I literally thought they were playing around. A week before I left to go back home, I had a weird slash creepy night. While we were staying there, my mom and I were sharing a room at my abuela's house. It was time for us to go to bed, so I said goodnight to my family. My mom and I never locked our bedroom door just in case someone needed to get something from the room. My mom fell asleep, and I was trying to doze off, but I couldn't. At this point, I was facing the closet. Keep in mind, I was the only one awake. I heard footsteps coming up the stairs and it stopped outside the door. I was waiting to see who it was, so I pretended to be asleep, but kept peeking. No one tried to open the door. The next thing I knew, I heard hooves walking or stomping from the door to my side of the bed. The room got darker and the energy in the room changed. At this point, my heart was racing. I took a peek to see if it was someone like my cousin playing a joke on me, but when I looked, I just saw red eyes staring at me. I don't know how I got the courage to turn around and squeeze my mom's hand really hard until she woke up. In the morning, I went downstairs thinking nothing of it. To be honest, I was still trying to understand what happened. My mom then asked me in front of my tias, why did you squeeze my hand so hard last night? I told her what I heard and saw. When I looked at my mom, it looked like the color had left her face. She thought it was weird because that same night, she had a nightmare and couldn't wake up. All she remembered was being wrapped with snakes. Where my grandma lives, there is a soccer field next door. And when I would go visit, I would always stay in the same room that I saw the glowing red eyes in. That room has a window that shows the back patio and the soccer field. I could see when people were playing. Once around 2 a.m., my mom couldn't sleep, and I thought she got sick or had pain. I asked, Mama, ¿estás bien? ¿Necesitas una pastilla? To which she replied, No, no, estoy bien, pero... No escuchas los tambores? I looked at my mom confused, wondering what she was talking about. I was close to opening the window when she told me not to because it might have been something trying to get her attention. After that night, she would go on and ask my family if they heard it, and everyone said no. Little did I know, that same night, I would hear los tambores. When I heard them, I got chills down my spine. I looked at my mom, and the sound seemed to be coming from the back of the house, which is part of the soccer field. That night, my mom and I would hear dogs barking like there was no tomorrow, and this happened every night. Well, eventually, I would go back to visit my family in Mexico once more, but this time I was 18 years old. I was supposed to stay in the same room, but I didn't want to sleep there, so I asked my tia and my tío if they wouldn't mind switching rooms with me, which they didn't mind. I would realize that it was the worst mistake ever. Everyone was asleep at this point, but not me. I just couldn't sleep again. But this time, it was different. I felt like I wasn't alone. I felt like someone was watching me from the top of the stairs. So, I turned around to see if anyone was there. What a mistake. I couldn't move my body. I saw something black on the wall. It was moving slowly, and it made me feel uncomfortable. My eyes started to tear up. I was looking at it moving slowly towards the mirror, 
and as soon as it disappeared, I felt like I blacked out. I don't recall falling asleep. When I woke up the next morning, I still had that feeling of not being alone and discomfort. I ran past the mirror, going down the stairs and to the kitchen to look for my mom. One of my tios asked me, ¿Qué tienes, chamaca? I was about to tell him, but I had a gut feeling that he wouldn't believe me. Once I told him, he told me in a calm voice, En ese cuarto suceden cosas. Yo una vez vi a un hombre parado detrás de mí en el espejo. Cuando me di la vuelta, no estaba. Por eso no subo allá arriba. I felt like my heart dropped and my blood was being drained out of my body. My mom saw how uneasy I was and how I wasn't talking. I told my mother and my tias what happened. They went upstairs thinking I just had a bad nightmare, but they all ended up coming downstairs. Todos se asustaron. The padre came that same day to throw holy water on the mirror, and no one was allowed to look at the mirror. Later that day, I had to go upstairs to get something. I don't know what made me look at the mirror, but I did. And I saw two faces, side by side, that made a skull and one long handprint. I turned around fast and pretended I didn't see anything, so I wouldn't scare myself because I was still upstairs by myself. I walked up to my bed and found money laid out in a backward L. Not going to lie, I took the money and bought some chips. So, thanks ghost. So that was it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching and thank you to everyone that wrote in their spooky stories. These stories made me miss Mexico. So I hope I can go very soon and possibly make a video out there for you guys. Let me know what do you guys suggest. I will be looking in the comments, maybe uh, reading my subscribers scary stories or go to El Panteón de Belén, something spooky but cozy at the same time. You know what I mean. <laughs> but let me know in the comments down below. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And I hope to see you guys all in my next one. Bye.